You're listening to the Spend 10K a Day podcast brought to you by the performance marketing experts at Mute6. This is your source for cutting edge insight into the world of online advertising from the team with more Facebook case studies than any other agency on the planet. Here is your host, Steve Weiss. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode today of the Spend 10K a Day podcast today. Have an awesome guest. Um, Right from Bo- coming in from Boston, where the marathon is going on. It's marathon day in Boston. Everyone's at home drinking their pints, taking a day off of work, except one one person. He's still in the office crushing the game. Ben, welcome to the podcast, man. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Fun to be here. So Ben runs a company called Privy. I'm sure everyone or most of our listeners, they don't know already. They they are gonna know now. Privy is one of the top Shopify apps on the platform um you can tell ben tell us a little more about privy in your words and then we'll talk about the the agenda for today which is uh the, you know talking a little more in depth about the shopify mailchimp you know fiasco that's coming on absolutely so for those that aren't familiar with privy we're a on-site conversion tool that sits on top of your e-commerce store whether that's shopify or big commerce or whoever um, and, and what you'll do with Privy is uh, design uh, displays that sit on top of your site with multiple goals. It might be to capture more emails, reduce cart abandonment, design upsell modals, or anything like that. So today we're on over 100,000 e-commerce stores through a freemium model. Got it. Interesting. And how did you get into just just out of curiosity, real quick? How did you get into the industry of conversion rate optimization on Shopify? Like, what did you do before this to actually inspire you to build yeah. such an amazing tool? So I grew up in a family with two small business owners, and I was the technical one in the house. So um, being an engineer, you know, from my dad for his business, my mom for her business would say, Hey, you know, build us a website. What's email marketing, you know, what's Facebook ads, Google ads, et cetera. And I found that, um, as I was starting to do some of these things repetitively for them and some other small clients I had, I found that one of the biggest challenges was that, uh, each of the businesses and my parents that I was working with, um, recognized that email was the, the biggest uh, ROI driving channel for them. Yet they had an incredibly hard time growing their email list. And that was kind of the moment where I realized, man, like there's got to be something uh, that adds sophistication in terms of the way that you try to grow your list. And that was the real kind of beginning idea behind Privy. Um, it took us a while. We were kind of working with different businesses in different industries, mostly small uh, retail businesses. Um, but then one of those happened to sell online on top of Shopify. And that was kind of the moment where we realized uh, e-commerce specifically is just devoting so much energy to email as a channel. And that's really where we should focus our attention. The quote unquote aha moment. (laughs) 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 Aha. (laughs) But uh, interesting, man. That's, I remember we first met, where we met. I think it was, it was in Boston. It was at, I think it was the Clevio conference. And I remember I I hear, I always, you know, from being an agency owner, someone that is really deeply involved in the Shopify ecosystem, uh, I I just kept hearing everyone talk about Privy. I, I, I didn't really know exactly. You know, I don't know everything. <laughs> Let me just say that. I don't know all the cool Shopify apps. Like, I try my best, but people get surprised when I tell them, like, uh, even though I'm CEO of a company, I don't know everything. I, I didn't know about Privy, and I, I didn't know exactly the capabilities. But I remember when you were telling me about the vision. Just we are walking. If you remember, we were walking across that long kind of like, uh, I, I, I guess it was like a little drawbridge, or, you know, in, near the Boston Harbor. And I remember you were just telling me, I was like, wow, that's, that's really, it's really interesting, man. Like I was really, I guess I was really impressed. I was like, damn, like you just had this idea and like you just executed. And n- now we're at a really interesting junction. Cause I think what we're talking, we're, you know, we're at the Clavio conference. We're talking about Shopify, you know, Clavio's there and MailChimp guys were, at the, were there. I remember the, all the partners were there <laughs> and like, it's all like it was like a fraternity all the all the, everyone was there you know and all the whole cool the cool kids were out and now 
all of a sudden, you know, two 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 of the big brothers are fighting. You know, they're 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 not happy with each other. You know, it's like the Clavios or the should I say the the male chimps and the Shopify's are not getting along now and. It's just really interesting just how the ecosystem like changes when there's a disagreement between two parties and you know what's your take kind of on you know why number one why this came about obviously I have I'm thinking that you know if Mailchimp is going down market they're with they're getting it with Squarespace Shopify wants to control the you know the obviously purchasing experience get the data back but in your in your own experiences you know what why did this happen one and what what impact does this have on the on the overall ecosystem yeah, I think there's a long, long history that obviously came through as a fight around uh, Mailchimp launching shoppable landing pages powered by Square, and and uh, Shopify kicking Mailchimp out a couple weeks ago. But I think if you take a step back and think about the Shopify ecosystem as a whole, app developers like Privy for years have had to kind of adhere to Shopify's terms of service. Um, you know, my take is that that includes a couple things. So the way that we handle data, um, the way that we work and refer business to Shopify, and also the way that we pay revenue share for downloads from the Shopify app store. Now, you know, no one's really confirmed this with me, but one thing that I'm, I'm, almost positive on is that MailChimp for years, because their MailChimp has really never paid uh, Shopify's revenue share as part of the partner program. So, you know, if you think about, you know, all these different things colliding, you've got uh, MailChimp launching shoppable, shoppable landing pages. And even though they're, they're never going to build a Shopify competitor, that's a bit of a threat to Shopify um, for years, them not, ever paying rev share. I think an increasing frustration with, with folks at Shopify about all of those things just kind of led to uh, this being the right time for both MailChimp and Shopify to say, you know what? Like, we've never been amazing partners. Let's just, let's part ways. <laughs> we've never been. We're not paying you. You know, you guys really don't like us. You know, you <laughs> Their partner. I mean, I've never once heard a Shopify partner refer Mailchimp. Yeah, you guys should go to right. Mailchimp is your solution. <laughs> so he's been like Clavio. Obviously, Clavio, Clavio, Clavio. That's been been the partner of choice for every you know Shopify person I've talked to at Shopify. But yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, and and look, I think um, I think what's super interesting is there's a handful of companies that have really grown up inside of the Shopify ecosystem. Privy's one of them. Um, Clavio's one of them, right? And so from day one, companies like us have, have kind of done things based on market demand within Shopify. So if we have a lot of Shopify customers, merchants asking us to sync contacts over to Shopify, we're going to build that, right? Or if there's opportunity to kind of get more market share within Shopify by doing things a little bit differently. When, when Shopify reaches out, you're going to do that. And I think, you know, that's something that companies like MailChimp um, or other big marketing automation companies like HubSpot just really will never do just because they, they've already grown up outside of Shopify. So they do business the way that they want to do business, not the way that Shopify wants to do business. Interesting. That may, and so what do you think, like, how does this affect, you know, the ecosystem, like it does, I guess my, my bigger question is, is this kind of like this one-off spat of like, you're not a good partner. This isn't a fit. Let's move on. Let's just both, both parties move on. Or is this a fact that, you know, Shopify is looking at this from a, you know, from a competitive revenue, per, you know, model, you know, vantage point, or do they say, listen, like we need, you know, we're publicly traded now. We have to hit certain revenue calls, like our stock, you know, do, do they look into new avenues of like, you know, we need to do, be doing email now and we need to be doing this just because there's so much revenue being left on the table. And I guess with that, how does that affect, is that the mindset they're going after? And if it is like, how does that affect, you know, all the other players in the ecosystem, you know, if you know what I mean, I talked to O'Sheen from Recharge is one of my close friends, and 
He's got an amazing platform, as you know. And I, I asked him, I was like, hey, man, like, do you think that Shopify would ever get into subscription billing? And I, I'm always curious about that, like, because, you know, I think what makes Shopify magical is that they brought all these amazing people and talented people together, you know? Yeah. So I think there's a lot there. Um, but what I would say is, you're right, right? So Shopify, I think they did a billion dollars this year. They're now valued in the public markets at 24 billion. And, you know, they need to take big swings that will drive a lot of revenue. I think one of those things is driving more revenue through their stores, the, the uh, GMV number, right? So you'll see a focus on Shopify Plus for sure. Um, I think the other thing is what, what service does every e-commerce business need? email <laughs> exactly so i you know no one at shopify will admit this but i have a sneaking suspicion that shopify will roll out email this year they they have to i mean it's ben they have to like it can't <laughs> it's just money on the table it's like the biggest no-brainer of no-brainers like if we're going to speculate on it obviously they don't want to announce that i mean they you know it's, it's just it's, <laughs> it's so no yeah. brainer, you know no, I, I, I know, but I, I, I think, you know, to a lot of the email companies out there, that may be scary, but I also think them pushing MailChimp out or MailChimp, you know, quitting, whatever you want to call it, it's going to do a couple of things. So even if Shopify rolls out an email program, I think what you've already started to see is Shopify working more closely with the other existing email vendors inside the Shopify ecosystem and app store that are playing by the rules. And I think that, you know, they're gonna be a bit agnostic um, and really partner and push those, those email providers to merchants because again, they're getting the rev share kickback for that. So, you know, whatever Shopify rolls out on the email side, you know, my gut tells me it's gonna be the most basic uh, email solution out there for the majority of Shopify merchants that do, you know, less than five orders a month. And that's fantastic. Um, but they'll also need to partner with all the other email marketing vendors out there and really push them because, you know, today or, or come May 12th, when the, the MailChimp app actually does not work, there's close to 300,000 active Shopify merchants that use MailChimp. So, that's a ton of business that's about to hit all the email marketing solutions inside of Shopify. So, you know, I think every single email vendor in the space is going to get a really nice tailwind this year. It begs a question, though. And I think like, you know, as entrepreneurs, me and you are thinking about operationally becoming operationally profitable today. And what are we doing to operate our businesses? Like we're we're operators. Um, but then again, on the other side, you have investors and you have people that are that are more future looking um you know especially like you know when they're when you're talking about m&a and you know opportunities that come to the e-commerce space like if shopify does get into email like i don't know how that that relationship is very you know positive with other email providers shopify going to market and saying we're going to work closer with the other emailers while at the same time building our own sounds like the old facebook uh you know p marketing developer program where you know, someone would come out with a really cool feature and then Facebook will copy it. And <laughs> that's kind of what it sounds like. And I, I feel like it's this, uh, you know, it's it's kind of this love-hate relationship where, like, you know, at the the, you know, the Clavios of the world, uh, you know, they've gotten a lot of trust. I mean, there's a lot of trust back and forth over the years. Like, they've come, in, come, come up together in a lot of ways. But how do you retain that trust? you know, if you do come out with an email program and, you know, what's to say that they're not going to go after other revenue? I mean, if they come out with the email program, what's to say they're not going to look at other areas of the ecosystem and say, hey, we could build that too and, you know, make X amount of cash on the table, you know? Yeah. No, I think that they probably will. And I think, I don't know if you're heading out to Unite, the Shopify partner conference in June, but I think a lot of people on are, are on edge um, to see how they react on this MailChimp thing. Because, yeah, it wouldn't be the greatest look, but at the same time, business is business, and if their merchants are asking them for kind of basic versions of uh, email or basic versions of uh, subscription billing, then I think as entrepreneurs in that ecosystem, you have to be prepared for a world where that happens. It's not the greatest look. But the way that I think about this market is, 
e-commerce is still in its earliest of days, right? And um, I don't know how closely you followed the B2B world. I do. You saw on top of Salesforce where, you know, Salesforce was, uh, call it 10 years ago, booming and still is, but um, you had Exact Target, you had HubSpot, Marketo, Pardot, Eloqua, all these kind of marketing automation email companies integrated with Salesforce. And they decided to buy Exact Target and offer that to all their customers. And what ended up happening was, even though Salesforce had their own email marketing solution, each of those other companies still went on to build $100 million or billion dollar companies, right? So I actually think that, you know, ultimately, if Shopify does roll something out, and it is that kind of most basic email functionality, it's just going to educate merchants, you know, around what they need on day zero. But as they grow up, they're still going to need more sophisticated solutions. And I think it's just going to bring more educated merchants to the table for all the other email vendors that are ready. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, actually. I, I just, what I'm thinking about, like, you know, we have a CRM department and we're always, you know, a lot of, we're always trying to be very unbiased. We, you know, in terms of who we recommend, uh, you know, obviously there's Clavio, there's Bronto, there's, you know, list track, there, 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 there's a whole plethora of, you know, people in that space. And I think that I'm, I'm really, fo- that should be the, you know, email should always be the the best performing marketing channel. I, we, we advise our, our clients to really understand the revenue per user, the revenue per email that you're generating. This is really interesting data because the cost per sending out email is not going up at the rate that the cost to reach someone on Facebook or Google is coming up. So if you're really good at the CRM and you really understand how to build flows and how to, you know, really build split tests in your automations, then you could really have a big win. Um, but getting back to like, you know, Shopify in, in housing email versus non in housing. It, do you find it like kind of ironic? I use the word irony here, Ben, cause I, I love, I think everything's kind of ironic. Uh, you know, this Shopify MailChimp thing happens and back it back in the you know the little bit of news that no one hears about is this oh look at that Clavio just raised 150 billion dollars oh Summit, Summit Partners puts 150 million in, or so into Clay in, into Clavio and I just <laughs> it's like I just find like in, in business the irony of stuff is very interesting to me you know oh yeah oh yeah amazing <laughs> amazing I mean, and honestly I think it's even the the fundraise from Clavio it's such a good thing for the ecosystem. Like I think there's going to be a ton of investment coming into the Shopify app ecosystem. Um, I think, you know, Clavio was one of the first breakouts for sure. Um, But, you know, there's a ton of other companies out there that are, are, are going to raise money. There'll be some M and a, I saw that uh, pixel union just got bought out by a, a, almost like a, hybrid PE VC firm that wants to buy more Shopify partners. So there's just, there's so much growth inside this ecosystem and it's like, it's barely scratched the surface still. Couldn't agree more, man. And I'm just, you know, I love chatting with people like you, people like Oshin, like you guys are, you guys are a lot smarter than me when it comes to like the (laughs) Shopify ecosystem. And I learned, you know, just because I want to, you know, I want to go back to my team and my clients and share, you know, into, you know, intelligent thoughts on what's going on. Cause I get these questions asked a lot. And the reason why specifically Ben, I reached out to you and I had this idea for this podcast was because I feel like our, you know, our, our listeners are also, re, you know, actively trying to understand how this impacts their business. And whenever there is something that goes on, I, I, I think it's, I think it's really compelling to talk about it and everyone has a, a different view on it. And it's just, I really appreciate you taking the time out, man. I know you're a busy guy and just wanted to say that. Absolutely. And actually, if there are merchants listening, just so everyone's fully up to speed, um, the key things to remember and and just a couple bullets are that um, the MailChimp app for Shopify will no longer work as of May 12th. So that means your integration with MailChimp is going to go from automatic to very, very manual. Um, And so you basically have, have two options. Um, you would need to add a automation vendor like Zapier or 
Shop Sync, which add costs so that you can continue syncing from Shopify to MailChimp, or you're going to need to look for a new email vendor uh, within Shopify. And uh, if you just head to the Shopify app store, they have a nice email marketing category to check out the right solutions for you. Yep. And then if you need any email capture or audience conversion optimization, uh, there's a there's a really good app that I, I keep forgetting the name of it. Oh, it keeps, <laughs> uh, you know, bet, bet. what is that name again? I just I keep forgetting it. It's a uh... yeah. Head <laughs> over to the app store and look for Privy. I think we're uh, we're we're one of the top apps with over a hundred thousand merchants. P R I V Y. Oh, V-U-R, 1-V. P-R-I-V-Y. Okay, cool. Before we wrap things up, man, I think yeah, I think we hit on a lot of topics today. Is there anything else you want to share with the audience, or you think we're, we're home free? No, it was great. It's great to catch up, Steve, and thanks for having me on. Yep, definitely, man. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, awesome podcast. Cool. All right, guys, that's, that's it. Another great great episode of Spent Take Day podcast. Uh, you know, keep following up with us for more updates on everything Shopify. Thanks and talk soon.